me say how important these classes are and how important it is for us to take them seriously. Yeah. So uh, the very first thing is um, we need to be disciplined as creative people. And um, I, we can't overemphasize this. We cannot overemphasize this. So we put out a task last week and we said um, people should submit before Saturday. Before Saturday, because I know why I said that, because I, um, I, I have a lot of things in my hands, like I'm a busy man. I am a very busy man and I can say that all over again. And uh, some people actually submitted before. But funny enough, because well, I was expecting I was expecting it. It's it's not it's not a new thing. If you give a thousand people a task, some people will still default. And the funny thing is, some people still uh, submitted. You won't believe some people were submitting four a.m. today. I, yeah, I was awake by that time, four thirty a.m. Yes, I was. But some people were submitting four thirty. Some people were submitting um, um, after eleven yesterday night, right? As if. I don't have time to sleep or probably that is what I'm going to sit and concentrate on the whole of my life or probably the whole of the day, right? Trying to figure out, okay, what this person needs. Um, I will put it out to you, right? In all candor that that is highly irresponsible because it only shows how you are going to handle a client's work when you do that. So if your client gives you a deadline, I have a deadline for next week, Saturday, and then next week Saturday comes, and you are you are you are just trying to cook up a mock up for the person. How would you strive for excellence? And 3D, uh, especially 3D, is not something you would do like that. To like, it's 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 not good, right? It's not good. And probably once this repeats itself with some certain set of people, I may have to um, tell the host that's a design pal. Um, came in, in person that probably they should excuse us because it doesn't make sense for me to or for everyone in this space right to uh, create time out of our no time or um, little time right only for some people to be unserious with uh, the things that we expect them to be serious with if you are here for something then show that you are here for it if you don't want to be here the door is always open right the door is always open whether it is paid, whether it is free, whether it is um, a scholarship, whatever it is, right? If you ask somewhere for something, show that you are there and be serious with it because uh, we are all adults here and we know how life is, especially in Nigeria. We know how life is generally in the sense that we have competition in our hands, a lot of competition. And you cannot be doing this if you want to be a world class um, creator. If you want to be a world class creative person, you cannot continue in this light. It is uncalled for. So please, I urge everybody to, to turn in tasks as quickly as possible, right? Uh, as quickly as possible. This is not the first mentoring I will take. And I know how it is chasing people to complete projects. And it's so disgusting, it's so annoying. And I don't want that to repeat itself here. So that's why I'm putting uh, out this. Uh, quite early enough so that everybody would actually sit up and I appreciate everyone that submitted early. I appreciate everyone that did a task, uh, but um, all the same, I'll be sharing my screen very soon. Some people did that. See, I, I immediately I saw some works. I know some were rush work, some were just like, let me just put something there and go. And some took their time, right? Some just put, I don't know, maybe eight pictures. I specifically said 30. Right, a lot of us didn't do thirty actually, if not all, maybe very very few, one or two people. So um, I would be sharing my screen now, and um, to just pinpoint one or two things that um, each and everybody, um, each and everybody uh, um, um, is tending towards to. Yeah, okay. So um, first off is let me let me share the screen right. About now, um, screen share my second screen share. I hope you guys can see my screen. I believe you guys can see my screen. Yeah. You just just uh, let me know if you can. 
Yeah, we can. We can see it. Oh, thank you. All right. So, yeah, uh, somebody said she didn't know or doesn't know, as the case may be. I think I should. Hold on. Instead of doing this, I think I should just um, duplicate my screen. Yeah, I think duplicating my screen works well. Yeah. Okay, so somebody said she didn't know that um, um, we said 30. Uh, sorry. Let me share my screen. Let's... So yeah, I actually said 30. So please, next time, let's try to pay attention to details because um, paying attention to details uh, is very, very crucial. So yeah, uh, let me just go to the skin. So out of about 40 people or 30 something people, we only had 19 people, right? 19 people submitted. And that's, 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 that's not fair. That's not fair on, on us, right? So, um, Let's just move on. So if you me, um, if you're if you're in the space, yeah, if you me, if you me is in, yeah, she's in the space. Um, so you are more of a cartoon like so everybody, everybody, everybody has something in common, right? Which is um stylized characters. Almost everybody has that in common, right? Stylized characters, stylized characters. And a lot of people, a lot of people, um a lot of people have that because uh of maybe they want to illustrate some people because of animation some people because of um 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 3d illustrations okay that's fine you can annotate that's fine um so okay doc um tommy etta tommy you said you can't see your name when did you submit that's the question yesterday so probably I must have, I must have, um, I must have, what's it called? Um, sorry, uh, I must have omitted it. Um, I want us to do this fast so that we'll get into the main thing. Uh, my, my, why is my Slack not? Because somebody's annotating my screen. Um, Okay, uh, Tommy, sorry, I couldn't see your work, but um, I'll would, I'll would get that. Where is it? Quote two. Um, so Tommy's work is where again? Um, if it's taking some time to load. All right. So like I was saying, while that is loading, everybody um tended towards the stylized characters, and um, that's the first thing we'll be we'll be um I'm, I'm I'm touching right. Everybody would go through stylized characters and to go through those stylized characters please everybody make sure that uh, i would love to also know uh the kind of um styles people would want to um um, um go by so probably the next task right is um i'm giving the next task from from now so please just have it down the next task and um, task is for you to have a plain sheet of paper, right? For you to write a plain sheet of paper on a plain sheet of paper and um, draw draw um, a character from your from your hands, from your head, right? I want to see how uh, people uh, would, because let me tell you something, everybody knows how to draw. Don't say, Anaba Favor. Favor, your name is Yeo. I wrote your name. Ah, uh, that's funny. Okay, I'll, I'll come back to that. Don't worry, people. I'll come back to that. Okay. Um. Um. I would like everybody to draw, write a character on their, on their, um, on a white sheet of paper. It can be any character. It can be anything. It can even be any object. Make sure you draw something. Think about it like this: something you want to illustrate, right? I want to get everybody's um illustration style. So when we get people's illustration styles, we we'll know how to. No, 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 draw, draw, draw. I didn't say, sorry, I think I said right, right? I mean, draw, draw on a sheet of paper. Yeah, the character of heart, yes. A character you love, or a character you would love to be your own character. It can be, in fact, it can be an object. It can be, um, um, 
It can be uh, what's it called now? Uh, let me open. Let me open Photoshop. It can be an object. It can be a shape. It can be um, whatever it is, right? That you love to 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 illustrate in your UI UX design, or you love to animate, or you love to um, you know model, right? And say, okay, I did this in a class. So, for example, now, for example, I would always refer back to uh, the NFT characters that I've made, right, in the past. I'd always like to refer back to that. So, uh, let me see. Okay, this one. So, for example, now, this is my plane sheet, right? And I love a character like, maybe a character like this, the X. Okay. Probably I love a character like this. Circle head, right? Maybe guys like this, circle her head and um, his body. Is probably like this, and then his hands, his hands are probably like this, like this. It doesn't have to be super, super, super perfect, right? It doesn't have to be super perfect. Trust me. When this is turned into 3D, you are going to love it. And then probably he has a face cap, and these are how his eyes, eyeballs are, right? And he has. It can be as simple as this, right? Um, I want to see how people, right? How people. How people are able to uh, um, pass on their ideas. But yeah, that being said, yeah, you can use a plain sheet of paper and then photograph it to me. In fact, that would be nice. But please don't send PDF to me because um, I don't I don't think I have time opening PDFs, right? I don't think I'm, I'm going to have that time to open a PDF and start, you know, uh, reading through. Okay. Um, okay, so moving on to our main course for, for the day. Yeah, you said so quick and nice. That's not nice. Okay, anybody that draws digitally, it is fine. Draw digitally and export it as a JPEG. If it's going to be traditionally on a white paper, draw it, snap it, and let me see, right? Also, you can use references, right? You can use references like your mood boards. You can use references like your mood boards. For example, if you see the... I'm still trying to... For example, if you see my marking scheme, right? my scheme of things right here. You see that everybody is stylized character. Rebecca, um, thank God. Um, um, even even um, Christian Young that chose games character and everything is, um, um, what's it called? Uh, stylized characters. So, and stylized characters are characters that are styled according to each individual, right? It, it's not, even all Disney characters are stylized. See, as long as it is not a real life character or is not close to um, a real human model, they call them stylized character. Probably like cartoons, they have big heads, small noses. For example, um, a very good example of another stylized character that I might want to draw is maybe. Um, let me let me let me do this. Maybe this guy, like this head, like so, and it's like this. Then he has he has his body like so, his stomach is like this. This is body, his stomach, right? And and probably he has he has this kind of legs, right? And then his shoes are like this. And then his hands, his hands are so short. Probably his hands are like this. So, uh, wow. I mean, okay, so. I'm uh, moving on to coming back to. So I'm just trying to show you an example of Salah's character. So his head is like this. Like this. Maybe this is his jaw. I mean, let me make this um, smooth thing it like this. Okay. Right, um, his head is like this, and um, for his for his tummy, for his tummy. So we have this. He has his tummy. He has he has his hands behind, probably behind him. Um, this too. I'm not going to complete the drawing of that. Those hands are. So this is an example of a stylized character. Maybe I should draw, for example. Pardon, pardon the the guy.
right? So um, maybe it has, and then it has eyes, funny eyes, he has his nose, and yeah, his hairs are here. And then by the time we would have, we add colors to this, it becomes a stylized character, right? So, um, am I the only one interested in motion design side of 3D? You are not the only one. I think you are the only one, Sha. Um, by the time, by the time I came out, you are the only one doing the motion graphics. Wait a minute. You are the only one. And that's fine. So, I'm going to teach you guys a general, generalistic way of modeling and rendering, right? And preparing any of your models for animations. So let's just move on to what we have today. I think I've done the first 30 minutes of them. Um, uh, but everybody is stylized character, like I said. And um, it, we only have very few people that are interested in scenery. Scenery, we only have very few people that are interested in scenery. Um, this is Taiwo. Um, let, me, let me open my Slack, it's still loading. Okay. So, um i didn't answer favor anymore another favor from favor i didn't I, and then and destiny the last person i stopped it was alex alex oluta day um taiwo taiwo is it dada taiwo right okay taiwo eta yeah taiwo eta if you have a 3d scene please submit it to let me see let me see what you've done all right, so let's move into Cinema 4D. Uh, so what these guys have done in the latest edition of Cinema 4D is that they have Tommy, Tommy Eta. Sorry, sorry guys, Tommy, Tommy kids. I need to sort out Tommy. I need to sort out Tommy. Uh, Tommy, actually, I can't find it for some reason. See, he's not here. This Chiemela, Rebecca, Alice, because I followed everybody. Okay. Wait, wait. Tommy. Nope. The work, the work is not here. Amarachi. Amarachi. Oh, maybe you are not in this class when I was ranting for everybody. You can't submit something 4 a.m. Right, <laughs> you can't submit something for AM and expect me to put it on that list. When, when, when did you submit? You said for AM, then Mary God Servant, you're just submitting now, like 10 12 AM. Like 10 12. I don't think I would take that, though. I don't think so. It's 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 not nice. I'm so sorry, sir. okay. That's okay. right. Amarachi, I think yours is here too. Just yeah. here. I yesterday, like, I you said? I yesterday. Ah, let me see. March. Okay. So, I'm by four. It's fine. It's fine. But you may you may just have to. Okay, this is Amarachi's work now. That means I didn't put your name. I saw the oh, I omitted Amarachi's one. Okay, excellent. This is an excellent one. All right, before we even move on, so Amarachi has a mix of stylized characters, right? These are stylized characters here. These guys, they are stylized characters, right? All these guys are stylized characters. She loves abstract, abstract, right? She loves ab abstract and environments, right? She also loves illustrations. This is UI illustrations. She loves VR and 3D right here. Oh, okay. She even has them here. And then um, she says industrial design. I'm not seeing anything industrial design here except this one. And this is more of character because of the 3D print. That's why I would say it's close to ID. Okay, this is ID here too. Okay, this is ID here. So she's interested in industrial design. So everybody, we know where we're starting from. Whether you are stylized character or whatever, we are starting from the basic of modeling, right? And I'm going to teach you, um, uh, let me say, two types of modeling for now. I can I can actually teach you the three, but the third one is advanced, which is sculpting, right? You may have to learn how to do characters like this. 
characters like this in sculpting, it is um, advanced, right? We may we may touch on the, uh, we may scratch the surface of that, but um, everybody we're going to do um, that in a in a while. So let's let's just move on from the assignments, please, so that we can enter today's um, um, class. Destiny, oh God, please, please, I, I can't take my eyes off people saying I can't see, I can't see. So please let me attend to Destiny one more. Destiny, when did you submit? I need to know. If you submitted uh, this morning, like maybe 4 a.m. or 10 a.m. or what, just forget it. I don't think 12 a.m. Forget it. You can't be here. Let's forget it. Let's move on. All right. So Cinema 4D, these guys made, I think I need to hide this thing. This thing is disturbing me. These guys made, um, these guys made something that is very close to what Blender has, right? Um, the 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 um, okay, D okay, detailed sculptured character. Oh god, um, something like this, right? This is sculpt, right? Let me look for somebody did that too. Um, I think it's um. So this is sculpting too. This, this is a detail sculpt. This is an example of a detail sculpt. Are you seeing that it's not that they modeled it with um, 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 basic tools. They sculpted them out. It's like using clay, digital clay, right? This is sculpting right here. Another example of sculpting is this. They sculpted this NFT. I also sculpted my NFT. This, this is also NFT sculpted. This is sculpted too. Um, so, so sculpted characters are more precise and they are more realistic. I think one more person did one more thing that is human. Um, let me show you before I move. Yeah, these are sculpted characters, right? So this guy sculpted. So all your, um, the dragons in the well, um, Game of Thrones, Thrones, right, were sculpted. Um, all the games that you have um, realistic character. Us, let us move on to what we have for today, please. Let us move on. <laughs> All right, so we have Cinema 4D right here, and I'm going to open the old one and the new one for you guys to see. Right? Um, this new Cinema 4D, let me let me try to open Blender too. This new Cinema 4D is um is is very, very close to Blender. Blender, it is uh they they have the interface um like Blender, right? And then let me open the third one, the old Cinema 4D. Let me open the old Cinema 4D. Yeah. Um okay. Let's move to I'm coming, I'm waiting for the old one to load so that I will do compare and con yeah. So this is the old cinema 4D. The very one that I started using about 10 years ago, and they really did not change the interface, right? So a lot of buttons here seem may seem new to everybody, right? But please note that these buttons are replicated right here in the new Cinema 4D. So I'm showing you this because I want to explain to you that um, whether you have the old Cinema 4D or the new Cinema 4D, you can use it for uh, the main purpose you want to use it for, right? So. <laughs> yeah, Blender and Cinema, yeah. So, disturbing me with calls, uh, disturbing me with phone calls. Sorry about this, guys. Um, come in. I need to, I need to, please give me one minute. Let me attend to something. Um, Interfaces, right? And uh, we have interfaces like the. Hey, we have interface. Please. I don't need this disturbance now. Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Let's just um, stop texting because it's it's disturbing my interaction. Thank you. So yeah, uh, we have other interfaces for other things. Like I said, other software have, they have rigging, sculpt, um, standard, 
and start up different um, body body painting and all that. But this is not the one we want to use today. So the one we are going to use today is this guy, this new guy, Ford Cinema 4D um, R25. So everything I've explained there is right here, but now has been rearranged and it's very, very similar to what these guys have here, right? So in Blender, right? Let me talk about Blender so that um, there'll be a balance, right? So we have our working space right here. This is where you have all your, uh, this, this space that I'm rotating up and down is where you have your object space, your object scene, like your main working space right here, right? And then we have your selection tools to your left and other tools. These tools change according to the workspace that you choose or you select here, right? And then this is your menu bar here, your menu bar where you have your file, your edit, your render, window, and help, right? And then we have different layouts here. We have layout for modeling. You want to model objects. You see that this change to your uh, quick pick modeling tools right here. We have your sculpting. Uh, this, these also change to your sculpting tools and to um, UV, which is um, 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 your UV mapping, mapping for textures. This change to your quick pick. We have texture painting. You want to paint a texture on an object, right? We have shading. Um, which is um, a material painting, like probably you want to add material to something, right? We have animation, we have the animation paint, we have rendering, if you want to render an object or a scene, and we have compositing that if you want to bring a 3D object into um, um, a real life footage, a real life video, and we have geometry nodes, which is um, nodes like uh, um, uh, nodes of geometry, right? As the name implies, and we have scripting. If you want to use your Python uh, to program whatever it is that you want to happen inside of Blender, right? And um, but okay, let me let me finish for Blender. And then we have the object manager here, or, or the object pane. This is where any object you select here, right, is highlighted. And this is where you have the attribute of the object you select, the material, the type of object, whether it's editable or whatever, right? And then we have the attribute manager right here but the the attribute of whatever it is you select we also have the settings right fixed in between here which are um peculiar we have the render settings the um 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 tool setting right here probably i said this tool i'll be able to have the setting for the tool for whatever tool i select here i'll be able to have the setting here we have the render setting right um we also have the uh um the uh, scene setting probably the, you want to set the size of your of your of your uh, what's it called of your render the size of your picture where you want it to then your animation um setting to like the frame rate and all that then we have the picture setting which is the um the um okay sorry yeah then we have the effects these are effects right in your um in your scene right we have light effects um and then the multi passes too right it will, will get um um more familiar with advanced stuff as we move ahead and then generally different settings we have the physics physical settings this is a rigid body like normal physics you know gravity um, um object fall off and all that and you no know, different different settings embedded here right and then we have our animation pane right down here so moving on let's go to cinema 4d he wants to rain now and these guys may want to misbehave all right so we have our objects window here like we have so most 3d um uh, most 3d uh software have their objects um um manager here even on real engine unity whatever then we have attribute manager right here we have the animation pane right here we have the quick pick tools right here we have the menu bar right here we have uh, another set of quick pick tool right here. So from what we saw last time in, in the previous Cinema 4G, we have these three buttons, the render settings, the render buttons right here. But now this time they've been moved to this part of the screen. So it's just basically the same thing, right? So, um, <clears throat> so um, moving, moving, moving forward, um, let's, let's talk about um what all these things mean and what they do 
But before we do that, we also have the uh, model, right? That's this is another interface. If you want to start modeling, it just makes it easy for you to pick out your tools. You can also do your modeling um, right here in the standard uh, pane, in the standard vision uh, mode, right? But if you want it to be easier for you, you can come to model and you see your uh, modeling tools right here and right here. You can also dock tools from wherever you want them to be docked, right? We also have sculpts. If you want to sculpt, just the same thing as you have in Blender, right? You have them here. So it's super important for you to know that it, it's, it will be a very, very swift thing if you know how to use two or three software together. We have UV edits. This is where you have UV body painting. Body painting, you want to paint the body of your characters. So we have paint. It's still the same thing as body painting, but but sorry, um, it's it's quite similar to UV, right? UV has to deal with texture that you export out of Cinema 4D, maybe to your Photoshop, and you paint it and bring it back. Then body painting has to deal with more of painting the body of your character in within the software, in within Cinema 4D. But we have Groom. That talks about air and fur and um, air texture and all that, right? So you can see comb, brush, and call, scissors, you know, um, um, you know, air tools, like basic air tools. Then we have track. Your, your track is also the same thing as your composite, compositing right here, right? Main a 3D, um, a 3D object on, um, a, on a 2D scene, um, on a real life scene, I mean. And then we have scripts, just like we have in, in, in Blender, where you can type in scripts and begin to, you know, code. And then we have nodes, nodes, just like Blender. So get familiar with these things, right? Get familiar with these things. So the first thing to do is that we want to try to um to understand modeling tools right what tool is good for modeling and the, or let me say the kind of modelings we have we have basically um uh let me say three types of modeling basically i'm saying basically right right um i think i think i think there used to be four but i remember the last one but basically three the first one is um, let me let me just have a new note. The first one is um, the first kind of modeling is uh, box, right, or cube modeling, right. Uh, the second is um, um, points, right modeling and the third is sculpting right sculpting so our box or cube modeling what does that entail as the name implies right it's just bringing out an object from a box or from a cube right bringing out an object from a box or bringing out an object from a cube that's what it, it implies then points modeling bringing out an object from points, you know, putting points together. Remember I said last week that um, in, your, in your graph, right? In your graph, we have the X and Y axis. Is this X? Yeah, that's Y. We have the X and Y axis, right? So we have your, your origin zero right here. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, one, two, four, five, six, seven. Let me just put seven, right? And then, and then they tell you that this object, right? The first object is, um, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? And on the Z axis too, but imagine that in your head, let me just do 2D. So they said uh, this object that we have a box that it has a coordinate one comma one, right? And, uh, seven comma seven right and um um let me see um seven comma one right and another um this seven comma seven seven comma one okay okay right okay so and the last one is um it's one comma one, seven point seven, seven comma one, two, three, 
Oops. Okay. Another seven. Another one comma seven. Right. Like this. So then I'll tell you that what object is this. So I'm I'm trying to explain to you now what point modeling does. Right. And also what your vector image, your your vector, your um um illustrator does too. Right. So that you understand how objects are being cooked up by a computer, like the basic. So we have one comma one. So I'm saying on the this is x and y. This is x and y. Right? X and y. X and y. So that means on the x axis, right, we have one, which is like this. Right? And on the y axis, we have, we have one, two, which is this is the intersection right here. Right? Same thing, seven comma seven, x and y, seven, right? Comma seven. So if we do this, I will do this, right? This is their intersection point right here. Then seven one, which is x seven, right, comma one, which is right here. And then one seven. So one comma seven, which is what? Right here. So by the time you draw everything, you have a square, right? So at the end of the day, so now imagine that we have a third coordinate. Remember last week I was telling you that what makes 3D is what? If you can remember, what makes 3D is what? The Z axis. I remember I said R, G, B, right? Equals to what? X, Y, Z. So um, R is red, G is green, B is blue which corresponds to X, Y, Z, right? So, and if you go back to our software, like I um, reiterated last week, right? I think it should be here. I don't know. Okay, so see it here, right? Right in the top corner. So we have X, Y, Z, R, G, B. So because of the depth, that's why we have 3D. So by the time I drop in my cube, right? This guy. So this is the Z axis. This is the um, X axis. Wow, they've taken their light. Awesome. And this is the um y axis as the case is right um i don't know let me use my um other drawing tablets instead of um instead of my mouse okay um All right. All right. <clears throat> okay, moving on. Um, so yeah, now that so this is the um y axis as the case is, right? So at the end of the day, we know that we are moving this in well, I'm no longer used to this. So we are, we are, we are moving this in the um, x axis we we're, we're going to be um, touching the red arrow so the same thing applies for any other um, shape so if we have a triangle for example they can tell you that this like this no i'm not in benio <laughs> i'm not in benio thank you i'm in lagos oh god that's a funny one all right so um moving forward now so objects and box modeling, let's start with box modeling. So in box modeling, right, we are going to be manipulating just three things, right? Which remember last week, I, I, I mentioned the three basic things of um, um, object modeling. Please don't be annoyed if you know um, way more advanced things that I'm teaching you guys right now, but I'm trying to lay a foundation. Everybody needs to know the basics. So unlearn and relearn, yeah? So now, we are moving, so we are saying that um, this, this um, object modeling, we can manipulate only three things, which are the points, the lines, and of course, the faces. So the same thing applies to your blender. If you come to your blender right here, and I go back to layout, um, probably I come back to, Wow, I'm no more. I'm no longer used to this small drawing tablet. I'm just pressing rubbish. All right. Okay. I'm upside down. Okay, that's it. So um, oh, this is not this is not what I thought it would be. Ah. 
don't mind this migraine tablet. Just just misbehaves. All right, let me just move on to cinema. All right, so the first thing is we change this because they, they, they call something in 3D primitive and then um, editable objects. Primitive objects are objects that you cannot manipulate. For example, this cube, right? If you check Cinema 4D, you see this little icon here. It shows you that this object is still in this primitive mode. It's still very, very much unmanipulatable. It's still in its primitive mode. Um, I don't know about Blender, but um, let me let me delete this object and have a new one. Um, object mode. <laughs> Blender. Uh, where is my? Uh, where are you? Where are you? Think. Uh -huh. So let's add a new mesh. Yeah, I know it's shifted. Thank you. Uh, shift A. Let's add a new mesh and put a cube right in there. I'm trying to zoom out. So the problem is my drawing tablet is giving me headaches. Hold on. Let me just use my. Exactly. Thank you. All right. So if you know shortcuts for Blender, please just let me know because I'm not used to it. So let me know the shortcuts. If. Um, I think I'll, I'll also be learning the same thing here. All right, so you need to move from object mode, that's in Blender, right? To edit mode. If you want to edit the object in Blender. And edit means now I want to, I'm um, telling the software, I want to be able to manipulate your points, your, your, your lines, and of course your faces. I don't want it to be like this. So once you, once you click that, you see that this is highlighted. So you can come to your quick, selection side here where you can decide to select uh the uh uh um what's it called the face right or the lines or the points as the case is so the same thing too moving back to cinema right so if i come back so see these three guys right here these three musketeers right here right if you select this guy on this point you see a point right there it's telling you that you're in point mode. So once you select points, you can manipulate that point. Yeah, select and drag, and then um, Blender people, come and come and rescue me. So I selected the points, yeah, and then um, when you, you when you select the point, you have to click on your move tool. You have to click on the move tool so you can move the point or the rotate tool so, or you can rotate the point. Right. Uh -huh. That's it. Okay. So my cinema so, body is not. You, you, no, you have selected the anchor point tool on the right. So uh, uncheck that and the rotate tool. Yeah, this is the pick tool, the right? Uh, yes, this is the pick tool. So yes, the edges are selected. Uh, no, that's the move tool. Good. Now you can move the point. Yeah. Okay, good. But two so points now, are selected at once. Exactly. Thank you very much. So I've learned something new today. Like I said, I'm not to use the blender, but yeah, that's how you, you select and move, right? So if you're, if you're going to your um, lines, the same thing ap ap applies to your lines. So you have to keep coming back to select your lines, right? And move, right? And uh, probably you want to rotate the lines. You want to, you know, make some tweaks. Remember, you cannot rotate a point. You can only rotate a line. You can rotate a face, a surface. So moving back to my beloved Cinema 4D that I'm familiar with. So in Cinema 4D, right, the first thing you do is you press C. C, C as in cut, right, to make it editable. So once you do that, you discover that this changes to a polygon shape, telling you that now you can edit your objects, right? It's telling you that now you can manipulate the objects the way you want to manipulate it. So the next thing is, um, I, I I go to my um my three musketeers right here. You see that it's very very similar to Blender. So the way you're doing it here, you are doing it in, in Blender too. Unlike the old Cinema 4D, whereby you be you just have to um okay, is this yeah? Whereby you just have to be doing something something different. I don't know why it's not loading. But let me just go back to okay. So like the old cinema 4D, 
right? Whereby we have the three musketeers right here, right? So um, you select your point, and then I can say I select this point. You see, immediately I select it, it switches to my tool, and then I'm able to manipulate the way I want to. And then the same thing, if I use my lines, right? I'm able to do the same thing in Cinema and in Blender. So this time now, let's move to a, simple, a simpler method of um, um, getting things out of your box, right? Remember, this class is still basics. I'm not even going to try to model something really, really crazy, right? So, um, and also in your box modeling, you are permitted, let me, let me give you a secret because this was what I used to do about, about 10 years ago, right? I used to think that I can actually model everything out of one box, right? As cool as that sounds, that is not very, very advisable. Because if you try to model um, 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 things out of one box, you would, you would hate 3D, you would hate yourself, and you would quit 3D, right? So at the time I was trying to model a car out of a box, you would discover that you have to add more boxes, you have to add more things, right? So now, if I'm going to be doing that, so I would say I'll go to my surface, which is the polygon um, tool. I select the face. The same thing in your blender. You can always do that. Let me undo what I've done here. Right? Go to your face right here. Select the face. Oh my God, blender. Right? Once you select the face, then you go back to this guy. And now you want to extrude. Right? You want to extrude um, the faces. So in extruding, it only means that you want to create a new face out of the polygon inside. Right, you want to create a new face out of poly that's you not know, extrude. We have extrude, we have intrude, um, um, of a, a polygon face. Right, you cannot extrude a line, but you can bevel a line. Did you get that point? You cannot extrude a line, you can bevel a line in this sense. Let me go to where I can play my so if I'm going to extrude this, right, I extrude it in and Remember that as I'm doing this, right, you see the attribute here is changing. So you can either do it manually like this, right, and change the offset values and, you know, play with whatever it is you need to play with. And then intrude and then extrude it, I mean, like so. Right, you can pull it out and then pull this guy in again. Exactly. So thank you, Blender people. Thank you. So please, uh, you can always also read in, in within the chat because Blender people are giving me tips. So they said that is insert. Extrude is E. So insert is, uh, this is insert, right? Okay, to insert a face. Oh, it's the same thing in my Cinema 4D. So they call it intrude, right? So it's called the, okay, now they, ch they change it to insert. But in the, in the old Cinema 4D, right? Uh, if you come to your old Cinema 4D and you set, select the eye, you see, they said extrude inner. That's what it is called right here. So that's what I've been used to calling it extrude, right? It's called extrude inner. You extrude it inner. But now it's called insert in the new form. You insert a new uh, surface to it, right? Um, and then, you can extrude. Extrude means bringing out like a new face from it. So this is extrude. So once you, once you select the face you want, and then you can bring out a new face from it. The same thing goes with your blender right here. So I can um, extrude by pressing E, right? I want to press the E. In Cinema 4D, you click and drag. Here, you just press the E, and then you set what you want to set, what you need to set um like so right and then you can intrude again what's the shortcut for your intruding which okay, intrude again extrude intrude again right um extrude right so we have similar shapes um as we have in cinema we have the similar shapes right here now moving forward moving forward so we want to uh we want to work with the uh lines in this point right remember that the more 
the more um, extrusion you do, the more polygons you have, and the heavier it gets, the heavier it gets. So as from next week, like I said, we'll be modeling um, examples from scenes. And please, if I'll be modeling things from scenes, please, um, I'll be going with Cinema 4D strictly, right? So thank God that we have people in Blender in this space, right? So once we are going with Cinema 4D and I'm saying something, and you want and you want to really use your Blender and you keep using Blender and you don't understand what, what I did, I would explain to you and then somebody in the space can now say, okay, uh, press this button and do this to get to where it is at, at a certain point in time. So uh, we're moving, moving forward. So yeah, the more you extrude, the more polygon um, surfaces you have, the more surfaces you have, right? So uh, let's move to the line. Now this, this time we want to make the lines, um, um, the edges of the lines smoother. That's what we come with beveling, like bevel, uh, beveling out the edges. So let me just, let me just do a sheet, sheet, sheet code right there. So um, I'm selecting my old points. Um, anybody in Blender, do you know the shortcut for selecting old lines like that? Anybody? I think you just, click and, just click and drag around the object when you are in edge mode, when you are selecting the lines. So good, please, have you listened to that? Uh, we go to your cube, um, enter your edge mode, edit mode, right? And then- Yes, and click and drag over all the, the whole objects and select the whole lines. So it says, click and drag. I think I'm doing it. Okay, I think I need to be in select. No? Blender people, blender people, come and save me. It's I don't alt click, okay. try alt click. Alt, alt okay. click. Okay, alt click. Okay, here it is. Right, right now. I've seen it. But funny enough, it's not doing okay. Good, great. Okay, so uh, it has selected the O lines, right? Uh, but what if you want to have a loop selection? Because this is what I'm trying to achieve in Blender. Look at this. This loop. This loop. Right. You are selecting a loop, not. Click on the direction you want, then press Alt click. Okay. All right. So. Um, Having selected that, I'll, I'll go back to Blender now. So we want to smoothen the edges of these guys so that it won't be like a stone that is, you know, thrown to somebody, thrown to somebody's face. So the next thing we do is would would um I know my shortcut, sorry, but we'll do what we call the uh bevel, right? The bevel. It's called bevel. And then you you can manipulate it here, you know, to, to check the offset. You see, once you begin to check the offset, it tells you how you know how deep uh, uh the bevel will be you can also select the subdivisions how many subdivisions you want it to have right and then um let me reduce this this way so that we're not going to have any form of intersections around the objects i didn't select this guy right here so let me let me let me add this selection let's bevel again Okay. All right. Um, all right. So um, having 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 done that, right? You discover that by the time you you check, right, the edges we selected they have more subdivisions, and now they are smaller. So we call these things subdivisions. Subdivisions are like the different kind of polygons you have on your um, on your on your objects. So we have um, we have polygon one and two, polygon three, right? We have three polygons here. The more the polygons, right, the more the subdivisions. And the smoother your objects are, but the heavier your 3D scene is, right? So if you render, you see that you have this super smooth, like kind of smooth edges, right? And this is just the basics of your box modeling, like your cube modeling as it is, right? And um, 
Now let's let's just randomly add a material to it. So probably I want to add a material. So where do I go? What do I do in adding a material? In my old cinema, yeah, we have our material right down here. Where you can just click and drag, and then you have the material added to whatever it is you want to add it to. But now in the new one, it's been it's been uh they are they are following their their brothers, right? They are following uh Blender. So um before before we add that, let me go back to Blender. So uh my blender, my blender, um um my blender tutor. So you said we select uh let me let me select. So we need we need to select loop selection. Anybody in the house, loop selection. Just like I did in Cinema 4D. So he said alt click. Okay, now I've seen it. All right, all right, let's focus on one then. Let's focus on one. All right, so somebody's saying it's confusing, either cinema for your blender. All right, so let's I'm focusing on cinema, right? Which is my core strength because I don't even want to start. Sorry about that, guys. I want to start moving um up and down. Okay, so sorry, so sorry, so sorry, so sorry. All right, so uh, where did we, where did you get it to last? Hope you got it to this extent that, okay, we are doing box modeling and you understand what faces are, right? What uh, points are, right? You understand what points are and you also understand what uh, lines are, right? Like the lines. I hope everybody understands this. Okay, so uh, since there is no answer, I would assume that okay, we do understand. Thank you very much. So moving, moving, moving on, moving on. Um, let me zoom out and get this back to um oh she said how the smaller blocks come out. So the smaller blocks came out by me doing extrusion extruded so i'm going to extrude points again for you for you to see so go back to your polygon mode right select your object don't worry if you say of me you will understand it's a matter of time by the time we start um, um, um modeling the things that you love or the things that you want uh to come to life you will understand so this time i'm selecting different faces so face one the second face uh probably this face right and then you want to insert hey blessing friday you want to insert new faces right so i click and drag right to have new faces let me let me undo that don't worry guys you understand in a matter of time and then um, um the person that asked amarachi this is how the faces came out right we intruded them or we inserted a new a new faces to um the, the 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 polygon face right and then we extrude them in or out as the case may be but let me do in first and then let's take them out like so and then let's take so as simple as it as it is, we're just we're just juggling between insert and extrude, insert and extrude. Simple insert does what? It inserts insert 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 a new face. That's that's what it does. It creates a new face in within the polygon, and extrude, as name implies, brings it out. That is it. Object in the what object manager? You mean objects here are not showing in your viewport? So if objects in your manager are not showing, check these two buttons. You may be one may be off. You may be on red. One of your objects may be on red here. So you may need to show make it visible in your viewport. You may need to make it visible in your viewport. So I've just built a one-sided 
spaceship. Don't worry about the second side, right? I just built a one-sided spaceship. So now let's imagine it's a spaceship. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to um, texture the entire thing, right? We want to texture the entire thing and probably have a basic render, right? So um, in texturing, we have, we have what we call, um, remember, it's basic. So I'm running you through the, the, um, the whole process that it will entail you when it comes to building your character. In fact, I should have even started telling you that you need to sketch. That's why I gave you the task that you should go sketch what you want to model, right? But this point, um, just imagine I sketched this um, spaceship already, right? Just imagine I sketch, uh, I've, I've sketched this spaceship. So the next thing to uh, to do is that we want to um, um, add materials. So we have texture, we have shader, right? We have material. But I'm very sure if I keep if I explain this one, you may be a bit confused. But let me explain anyway. So we have uh, material. Material is the physical property of any object, right? Material is the physical property of any object. Then, um, 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 shader, right, is also the physical property of that object, but it is now much more advanced. Shader is like your reflection, your um, um, roughness, anisotropy, um, whatever. That is what is called shader. Material is just like the, uh, um, is like everything put together. For example, um, um, iron is a material, right? If you, if you check your, maybe your, um, a nail, for example, or an object that adds iron, right? You see that, oh, the material for this is iron, actually. It's, it's iron material, right? But the shader, right, of that iron, is reflectance. It can reflect light, right? And it is, it has anisotropy. I will explain what anisotropy means later. That is shader. Then the texture, right, is now the roughness. Like, oh, is it rough? Is it smooth? Is it coarse, right? Those three things are inside this Cinema 4D and every of your 3D software. So now, choosing my material. Uh, where are you? Uh, where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? That is okay. Sculpt, UV, paint, room, track, script, nodes, standard. Um, it should be somewhere here. Now, this is even confusing me the more. Cinema 40 people. Okay. Let me let me let me explain using let me explain using the old one. I'll come back to this. All right. So, um, so this is just imagine this is our spaceship, right? The interface is still the same thing. So I I I actually really want to explain material to you guys. Materials. So let's open a new material. So this right this guy is material. Like it is, it is the basic material like maybe iron like i said maybe it's um wood maybe it's metal maybe it's whatever it's called material right it's called material so we have different shaders or attributes of these materials we have color diffusion luminance transparency reflectant environment fog bump normal alpha glow displacement and so on and so forth right these are the qualities that make up your material for example if you want to make an iron like metal you know that your metal most times they have let's 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 kill color they don't have color in that sense for now you may think it has color but no most times your metals reflect the color of things around them your metal doesn't have its own own color per se right so but you can you, some people can call it oh it has silver it has, it has this it has that it has blah 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 so it has reflectance 
right? And reflectance is is the quality of an object to to uh, bounce off bounce off light, right? And bounce off the images of other objects on itself. All right. So please fill, fill your attendance form, please. Then, uh, so let's let's go to the reflection. Let me turn down. This. Let me um, increase this and reduce this. So you see that we have something metallic already without even putting color. Such that once we drag it on our objects, once we drag it on our object, we have a reflecting object, right? Let me just create a sky. Uh, let me just. Don't worry about this one I'm doing. I would explain all this to you guys uh probably later this is advanced stuff so okay uh let me let me render so i think you should be able to is somebody trying to say something are you trying to say something okay nobody all right so your material like i said is the texture um so yeah your material is like the physical property of your objects physical property of your object so i've dragged the material on this box now it may not even be visible to you but it is actually reflecting the things in the environment right is it reflecting the sky and even the floor so um let me add other things to it Probably a sphere. I'm going to add this sphere. Um, let me remove. Let me let me put this floor down. The right. Okay. Let me change the sky. Don't mind all the all the magic I'm doing. Just just to explain how materials work right basically all right and then let's let's render what we need to render so if you check well the computer is calculating trying to um figure out um your material type the environment the physical environment the ambient occlusion the global illumination and um every other physical property in this uh in this in this scene so um let's see what happens with this guy let me let me see i think i should be able to get out my material from this guy um track scripts standard uh, window I'm trying to i'm trying to think Material, 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 shit, see. Okay. All right, I think I've seen it. So see where they dropped it here. They dropped it at the corner right here. So let me have a new material. Okay. All right. So let me let me let me go back to uh the favorite cinema 4D, this guy. All right, so the material guy, uh the, the material editor is here. Unlike unlike the old one, right? <clears throat> it was under here where you can just you know create a new material. So if you're using the old cinema 4D, please um let's move to the new one. If if all right, so I have my spaceship like we we're doing before, the spaceship. And then we have our material, and then we've created the new material. Remember, remember, you can also use other render engines. We have um, V-Ray, we have Octane, we have um, Redshift by Cinema 4D. I think it's here. The Redshift is here. Uh, Redshift. Okay. Redshift is okay. Redshift is here. We have Redshift. Yeah. um um external renders we have arnold we have corona render all right so 
just like you, just like I said the other time, right? Your um, your 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 material window is is right here, right? And let me double click on this so that it will pop out. So we have the reflectance, we have the illumination, we have uh, um, the color, right? So whatever it is that you, you select here, right, will be what is available for you to edit. So I don't want color like we did in the previous one, but we want reflectance. So the reflectance, we select um, the reflection, the specular, and then we... Increase the specular strength, reduce the width. If all I'm doing is is still um um is still what's it called to you um magic to you, don't worry. We'll get to a point where everybody would understand fully. Yeah. So all right, um specular strength. Let me let me add back my color. Then also, Cinema 4D also provides you with um, um, a content browser where you can where you can get um, predefined predefined um, um, predefined materials right from your cinema right from your from the object library. Yeah, so just putting that out there. So reflectance, reflection legacy. Um, Let's increase the reflection strength. Okay. So my spaceship, all I just need to do is click and drag and drop it on the spaceship. So you notice that it has been added to the material right here. Right? So let's add a floor. Let me add a floor to this. Um it's supposed to be here. Let me just drop a plane. Right. Um, make it bigger so we have something it's sitting on. All right, and then we this is still box um, modeling. Remember, in box modeling, you are not only limited to boxes. I can decide to say, you know what, I want my spaceship to have a spherical head, and then I can bring it up here. Right? I can bring it up there. And increase it. I can decide to make the edge that big, right? And decide to make it that big. Uh, we can also change the uh, type of sphere. It is right. We can we can we can change it from standard sphere to maybe an octahedron. Move the segments. You know. I think I will do it like this, and then probably put. The material for the ship on on the uh, on the sphere right there. Maybe it's gonna just be like a diamond right there. Yeah, and then uh, I'll look for another material for the um, for the for the for the for the space spaceship itself. Let me just pick metal. No, let me use another one. Uh, car paint, exactly. Car paint is a very good one. So drop a car paint on it, yeah? All right, then our render. Let me, let me save this. Okay, then our render settings. Let me, let me set this. Um, so we have anti-aliasing, we have put it the best. I would explain all these render settings to you too um, in the next class because I don't want to explain everything to you now because it would be too much for you to sink in. So um, radiance catch. Let me just put stereo preview and leave it like that. And then uh, let me use physical. Sky. Um, let me use 
explore environments. Yeah, who is there? I know, I know, I know, I know he's not sinking in. So where, where, where did you get lost, please? Talk to me, oh. But you can't tell me everything, Shao, but let me know. Where did you get lost? The beginning, sir. <laughs> beginning? Why did, how did, how, how possible did you get lost from beginning? So, um, some of us are not um, familiar with this hey. at all, but <laughs> I know you're not doing it. I didn't want to ask that. Okay. okay. <laughs> I'm not looking like this. <laughs> okay. You have, first of all, do you have your cinema 4D? The whole process, Christian, hey, okay. Do you have your cinema 4D with you? That's the question I want to ask. Okay, good. The reason your rendering is taking forever is because probably because of your system rig, right? Your system rig. Um, what kind of computer do you have, right? Your system rig may 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 be the problem. Okay, now that I've gotten to this stage, and and. Elijah, Elijah, um, Elijah, part of the class is saying they don't even understand Jack Robinson, right? Um, what's the solution to this now? Let me see. Mm. Okay, this is the solution, right? This is the solution. Um, go to YouTube. Simple. Just, just go to YouTube, right? And I need you to understand the interface. Like, because time has gone now. Or let me, okay. I don't think time has gone. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, yes, I was let going me... to like say that if there's any YouTube channel that you can like recommend for beginners, like beginners, so that yeah, you can I know. Like, yes. get acquainted with the interface. Okay. No, 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 just clicking this one, this one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to see the best way to, to reiterate this thing because somebody's viewpoint port is not showing. Uh, all right, all right. Let me, let me, let me, let me reiterate, right? Let me, let me reiterate. So it's gonna be like as if I'm starting from the beginning. Hmm? Let me just reiterate so that so that you guys would understand um before I start saying I'm modeling, because it's now as if I'm moving too fast. Right? Let me reiterate. Hey. So everybody in this room, you want to create a 3D model for one reason or the other right and the reason you want to create the model can be for illustrations can be for personal reasons can be for whatever reasons in which you want to create them whatever reasons now you have to sit down and and break down your design thinking process i think i should have started from there right so let me let me let me have let me have um let me have a new, a new one right here. So yes, so for example, you want to create that spaceship that we just created. The first thing is you want to sketch, right? You want to sketch, you want to ideate. What is wrong with this guy? This guy is not writing. So you want to ideate, right? By the time you ideate, we know that okay, we've, we 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 know the problem. We've we've already found out the problem and you want to solve the problem now we want to ideate and then you want to you want to um um in 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 ideation you have different types of sketches right you want to sketch different things you want to you know um have different concepts in your head and you know your end goal from the beginning right and then you after you've you've sketched you've ideated you've you've picked up um everything that um you've defined the problem 
um, now you have the sketch of your spaceship, right? The next thing you want to do is, okay, I want to model this thing. That's when we come into this software. And that's the main purpose of the 3D, right? Now explaining this, don't look at it as if it's cumbersome. There's a secret, and this is what I do, or what I did in, back in the days, and I still do it. When I open a new software, and I don't understand the terms, I said it last time, guys, how many people even went back to check for the quick guide for your Cinema 4D or for your Blender? How many people? Answer me, Amarachi, a hair for cinema, yes. Okay, good. So, quick start, I mean. So, you went to search for it, right? What did you, what, what did you find inside? That's the question. So, okay, what did you find inside? Okay, this is this is one here. I think I'll copy this and 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 send it to the group. Good. So the tutorial videos explaining the interface. So now that see, because the first thing you must understand is the interface, right? I'll I'll copy this and send it to you, because this is a new Cinema 4D now. I'll copy this and send it to you. Okay, thank you very much for following one of the recommended tutorials so i'll send this to the group so that everybody will be able to no 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 i don't want to watch this all right so these are guys from maxon themselves because when when they release the new interface they have to they have to bring out a new video so Go and watch that video. I don't think I don't think I should stress myself on this first. Go and watch that video, right? So that video will explain all these things to you, all these buttons that we are seeing here, all this jibi jabba up and down. The video will explain it to you. But first, know that you must be able to understand what most of the buttons here do to be able to even know the next step to take. Do you understand? So I think I think I won't overflog. Um, yeah, that's better. I think I won't overflog um, biting the interface because I, I think I was just explaining as if you guys understood before. So that's the second task for the week. It's a two hour. It's a two hour video, right? So check the video, watch the video, understand the interface of Cinema 4D, understand what this button does and what that button does and remember sketch your sketch in fact in fact i'll take it in a notch higher now i'll take it a notch higher um i think i'll give everybody something to model i'll give everybody something to model you know what um that that thing you you're, you're drawing on paper remember i gave a task I gave a task when we first started this class. I said, the thing you would love to model, draw it on paper yourself. So at this point, you are using your hands to do it yourself. So draw it on paper. It can be a character, it can be an object, it can be something abstract, whatever. So by the end of the video, once you're done watching the video, right? That thing you've drawn, please, oh, this is a task, oh, that thing you've drawn, Model it inside Cinema 4D. Are we fine? Yes, it's real get gay. I'll be exactly that thing you've drawn. And guys, guys, I'm pulling my hairs now. Don't come and draw sphere for me oh, and say, eh, it's fair. I drew and enter Cinema 4D and just click sphere and then render it out and send it to me as picture. Don't do that though. Ah, don't do that. So I want you to have a character. It can be a combination of sphere. It can be a combination of sphere and cube. 
and then um, cylinder and then um, um and, and a tube whatever just model what you draw on paper do you understand the assignments you cannot draw circular you cannot draw circular and bring circular to me so you should have at least a combination of five objects and the combination of these five objects must form something meaningful add color because in that tutorial is a two hour tutorial they're going to definitely show you how to add colors and how to render and how to save your file and if you don't know check out our tutorials or come to meet me during the week and say guy i don't know how to render and i'll tell you but at least a combination of five objects add your colors it must make sense render them out and send them on the group that's the task for the week it can be shapes yeah it can be combination of shapes but the combination of the shapes must make sense it can be human it can be object it can be anything it can be abstract even if it's abstract let it be beautiful let me show you something so that you will have the idea of what i have in mind so imagine you draw something like this it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be super detailed like this right but know that the head can be a sphere the glasses can be circle this can be a sphere the neck like you can actually block it out don't worry jennifer you'll be all right let me show you another one um 3d abstract so this is what i mean by it can be abstract internet will do what you need to do fast okay so good so, so see this abstract this is a very good one combination of shapes but you know that these guys put color blendings it's not like you just come and give me something that doesn't have colors right so it can be anything it can be what you want to put in your project it can be what you want to use as your desktop background it can be your phone background see abstract shapes right here see different abstract stuff this can be done in cinema 4d but i won't expect you to get this verbatim because this is advanced lighting and advanced render yeah so i don't like to slow things because three months is not is not see the reason I, i'm giving this task is this i was explain i was trying to explain the interface but a lot of people do not understand so i now assume that the two hour tutorial i'm passing on to you guys is sufficient enough such that you can go back and watch it over and over and over and over again so once you watch it over and over again and you get the point behind it you can you can see trust me guys trust me in three days you can get the whole interface of cinema 4d and do this assignment in three days you can do it in one week you can do it and submit it so i'm giving a stretch of till friday friday will be no, sub no submission date is Thursday. Thursday, latest Friday, it should be submitted. And um, I'm going to ask Kenny on on Friday after the submission date or the submission deadline. If you've not submitted, I would I would ask her to close the group for for um, people to be able to submit after a particular time. So you you won't be able to drop anything. So you submit on Thursday, but latest by Friday um 6 p.m no no friday 12 p.m actually 12 in the afternoon friday latest to submit no you're not submitting um, paper and okay yeah submit paper yes yeah, submit paper because i want to see that you ideate your idea that okay i have this in mind i've sketched it now i've transferred it to 3d so you are going to submit the paper drawing and the render Yes, you can do abstract, you can do abstract, you can do shapes coming together. Because let me tell you a secret. Let me tell you what I have in mind. And the thing I have in mind is that if you are in this space doing this um, um, task, this task, you are going to have it in your personal CA. Me, I'm going to grade people personally. And I have a gift for the best students, me personally. So 
I will not say more than that. I won't. Yeah, you can do house. You can do house. You can do digital drawing. See, guys, explore yourself. Think outside the box. Be free. I don't want to limit you and say draw on paper and transfer it to no. You can you can decide to conceptualize and ideate in your digital world, right? And then, but make sure that you submit two things: your ideation sketch or sketches, and then your 3D model rendered. And to get that 3D model rendered well, go and watch your Cinema 4D. And if you are not comfortable with Cinema 4D, your own is Blender. It's fine. Go and watch Blender, but make sure that, see, I want to see results. I don't want to know the tool that you use, right? If you like, go and use ZBrush. If you like, go and use um, Adobe um, Dimension. If you like, go and use Autodesk Maya. Just make sure that we have Sketch and the final product on that day. So by the time I begin to see your, your people's renders, I begin to, in fact, I'll be able to pinpoint to, okay, where you guys have issues. Maybe it's lighting, maybe it's render, maybe it's um, object manipulation and modeling, maybe it's um, whatever. Do that. I think this is a very, very good approach. Any question before we run? Yes, yes, you are submitting both paper and sketch. Again, both paper and sketch on the on the page. I mean, both, I said paper and sketch, both um, sketch and final 3D render. So I think I think I think everybody will be fine. I think um, I have a question. Yeah? Okay. When when we started, I tried to follow but when I opened my own cinema for the I couldn't find the box. So I closed my laptop back. So I don't know if it's a different one. I don't know how Why to get the book. You close your laptop back. Eh? I don't want to distract you while you're explaining. No, you so should have. Was... That's why I'm here for everybody. See, eh? If I'm explaining something, don't worry. Don't be scared that I'll forget what I'm explaining. Once you once you get to a point, you because it's called follow the leader. So once I'm taking a step and you've missed the step, right? Just call my attention back because there may be somebody in the audience that has also missed the step but doesn't want to ask. You just ask. You'll be helping somebody. So you understand. So um, you said you, you couldn't find the box or, or you didn't see the box. I didn't see the box on my screen, just like yours. Okay, so uh, okay, it's just like empty like this, right? Yes, it's empty, just like that. Uh, it's here now. See, the cube is here. Just click it and it appears. Have you done that? Yes, I will do that right now. Exactly. Thank you. So, you're welcome. So, yeah, um, please, do we have any other question on the... Please, so... Yes, you know, please, I have a question. Oh, yeah, oh, throw, throw me your question, oh. Okay, um, I don't know if it's related to this class right now, but I just want to know, like, what's, what's the role of 3D animators in a project? Like, let's say we're working with UI UX designers, like, where do we come in? What's our role if we have, like, a project we're supposed to work on something? What do we contribute? Okay, thank you. I like that question. The first thing you contribute is the, um, uh, the object animations in the project. For example, they want a character to run um, across the screen. You are the one that will do it. For example, they want a 3D um, and 3D um, illustration, maybe a 3D of a character or a 3D of an abstract. You are the one that will do it, right? Probably they want um, the, the intro, maybe they, they want an intro on their website and in the 3D animation, you are the one that will do it. Maybe they want their logo, right, to have a 3D pop-up, like, like once the, the page finally loads out, you are the one that will do the animation and give them the GIF file that they're going to use. So just think about it, limitless. Whatever it is that has to do with three-dimensional art and animation, it is yours. Like it is yours to handle. You get the point? Yes, I do. Thank you. Yeah, so, yeah it, it, it may not come every time. It may not come every day. It may not be what you'll be seeing. But 
trust me, once the 3D guys are needed, they are really needed. Because 3D is not something you just say I need. You 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 need it when you need it. You get the point. Yeah. Okay, thank you. God bless you. Any other question? Uh before we call it a, a day. Please, so ask question about the assignment. So I don't want to get to the middle of the week. And all I'm hearing is uh I didn't understand. So like those NFT designs on a ma on an NFT marketplace are done by 3D designers. Yes. So my NFTs are done awesome. by me. Like I said. So if I'm coming, uh let me answer, let me answer this last one, this NFT question. So uh where is this I'm coming? I want to show you. Okay, I think I should just go to pictures um full version. Uh, super rare. Okay, so all these characters you are seeing now, right? They are three D characters I made. Do you understand? NFTs. Well, those were the first ones. NFTs, NFTs, right? NFTs. So three D three D artists are super super important. NFTs. They are, they are super super important. Right. So next question, please. Um, I want to say something. Um, it's a question. Yes, the, okay. I'm not really bad, but there was a point when you were calculating something about this X, Y, Z axis. So mm -hmm. I was kind of if you are to calculate things before starting something, because you started calculating before you showed us around. So no, is it like, isn't it? Maybe no, 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 no. It's not a must. It's not a must. Um, um, Kelechi uh, Ephraim, I'm coming back to your question. It's not a move that you answer and that you calculate all those things. So I'm just trying to show you guys because I love it when I understand the basic concept of something. See, if you can understand the basic concept of anything in this life, you'll be able to do it. So I've been able to understand the basic concept of how a computer works, how a software works, how it calculates objects, like what makes it generate. A tangible object and i've been able to link it back to mathematics and points and values and all those things so i'm just trying to make you guys okay. um understand the working yeah. concept then um kelechi Ephraim, he said does the camera okay my computer is almost dead he says does the camera affect um rendering yes it does so your camera setting is very very important in which i'm going to touch it to as we go on in this in this class because there are a lot of things to consider when it comes to 3D. If your camera um, focal point, your aperture, your um, uh, what else again? Uh, your 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 viewport in the, the camera itself. If it's if it's lopsided or probably you are too zoomed in, right? There will be a problem when you're rendering. Yeah. Uh, sorry, that last person with the voice note. I'm coming, please. Let me answer Walter's question too. So, what is the role in this project? A decentralized gaming platform where users will be able to play the game by paying crypto coins to a BTC wallet and be able to create NFT for their game scores. Our role, a centralized gaming platform where users... So yeah, our role is to create the 3D characters, right? And the animations that will occur in the game. That's the role. See, 3D guys are super important because now we're having a lot of games everywhere. So you create the character, you create the animation of the character, you create the objects, you create everything that has to do with the environment of the game, right? So the working development will be done by game developers in the back end, right? So that's it. Do we have to sketch every single thing we want to animate? No, 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 you don't have to, but it is, it is, it is better for you to ideate what you want to bring out in 3D on paper first. Like, see where you are going. See where you are going. Try to envisage it and envision it first. So once you see where you are going and you're like, okay, I think I like where I'm going, then you can enter your favorite software and begin to work. Do you understand? So um, that that person that unmuted, please, can you unmute again and ask your question? You're trying to say something.
Okay, Let... my question is, I'm trying to flow with the example you gave with extrude and insert. I'm just trying to play around with Blender because my cinema for this not updated my GPU yet. So, but I'm okay. having difficulties. Why? Because the way you the way you did yours was quite different. Um, I don't know. I'm trying to select. I'm selecting all the um points. And I don't think you selected all the points. And then it's giving me if I'm extruding, it's the same line. It didn't like, you know, nudge one step, and then I could be able to extrude or take it in. So it was, okay. it was just extending the thing in the same line. I don't know if you can come up with that. And then let's see how if I can render on Blender. I'm kind, I'm also having having difficulties with that also. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you okay. can render you can render on Blender. We have I think we have some small um, some um, Blender gurus here. I can tell you what to render. But the render setting on Blender is by the bottom right corner there, and um, you can also go to the render tab. I think they have a shortcut which I'm not sure I know. Maybe it's Control Shift B or Control Shift R. I can't remember. But for that extrusion, you can only extrude. You can only extrude if a polygon face. Do you understand? So you must make sure that your polygon face is selected and then you insert. By the time you insert and click and drag, it, it, it gives you another face and then you extrude by pressing E. Once you press E, it's going to automatically push out and then you just over your mouse around and, sit and click and then it's going to work. Do you get? I think I think uh, we, we, we I I would like us to run a poll after now after the class, um, um, between Blender and Cinema for the people. So I want to know the people using Blender, the number of people, and the number of people using Cinema. Yeah, so that we can carry everybody along at the same time. That's I think I think that will work. Okay, Dockers, you have a question. Um, um, before Dockers speaks, did I answer your question? Um, Golden Gold Nelson, did I answer your question? Yeah, yeah, you answered my question. Anyways, I'll, I think I'll figure it out too. <laughs> Thank you, sir. Oh, okay. You're welcome. All right. Um, Gold. I'm sorry. Um, Dockers. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Okay, okay, good morning. So, um, first of all, I really want to appreciate you for taking the time to speak us through this. Because I know how, like, frustrating and, um, how frustrating it is to teach people and I just want to say that. Okay, um another my question is when I was watching the tutorial video for Cinema 4D. Sorry, can you hear me? Yes, yes, I'm here. I'm here. Okay, when I was watching tutorial videos for Cinema 4D, the um shortcuts, the ERT, I'm not quite familiar with it because when I use other softwares, I like to Customize. I'm really used to extrude as E, um, uh, scale as S, and mm. every other thing like that. Yeah, but I could not customize it on the Cinema 4D interface. I don't know if you can. No. You can. You can Is customize the shortcut. Go to preferences. Just press Control E. Go to preferences, and then you see shortcuts. You should be able to, uh, you can, you can actually. In fact, that, that also happened to me. So I know how to use a lot of software and I, and I know a lot of shortcuts, but guess what? The only software I don't really know the shortcuts is Blender. It's blend, like it's just this Blender. Do you understand? So I would, I would, it, it's fine. You can customize all your, all your software to, you know, using one shortcut so that you be comfortable. But me personally, I just like to stress myself. All my software they have different shortcuts, and I, and I like I know them intricately, one after the other. So have you seen it? Have you seen the shortcuts um, tab? Oh no, I'm um I can't open that. I'll open it later. All right. So yeah, that's what you do. Um, go to uh, your preferences and edit your shortcuts. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Um, any other question? Another question before we run away, before we call it a day. 
It's been a really, really good day. Okay, so since we don't have um, any other question, please, that means I assume that everybody got the um, task, the assignments. Uh, we're going to do two things after now. We're going to have a poll on the, on the page, on the group, which is between Cinema for the People and Blender People. Who uses Cinema? Who uses Blender? Right? And if you're not using anyone yet, right, um, um, just let us know. But... I'll, I'll be using Cinema 4D to teach more often than not, right? And um, that's one. Then number two, two. Going forward for the task on Friday, the 12 p.m. deadline is 12 p.m. deadline. Once it's 12.01, the group will be locked such that people will not be able to send messages there. I believe um, Slack can do that because Discord can do that. I believe Slack can do that. So if we're we begin to have that. I think people begin to get uh, more serious. Um, I think that's everything. Like I always say, and I really, really mean it. I love you guys. And um, I wish to see everybody perform at their best, at their optimum, at their, like really, really best. So I really, really love you guys. And I love to impact the little things I know to you and to teach you what I know. I'm also learning, like I said, as you, can, as you could see, I was learning blender today i actually didn't really know my way around blender right but still on still um i'm open to people correcting me and people teaching me the things i don't know i'm human like you guys too so please when you feel the need to let me know some things let me know my my uh details my numbers are always available any time of the day right it's just that it may take one or two while before i respond but i'm always responding to people so thank you guys again. I love you. Have a very, very good weekend. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Uh. Okay. Oh, sorry. You wanted to say something?